come a long way in ten years. The sound of an echo reverberating a decade later, and a journey that continues today. Vaporwave. Manufactured nostalgia. Derided as a meme to collect dead more than once and yet vibrant enough to spawn a hundred subgenres. Vaporwave is crossed over. The meme turned mainstream, washed down with an Arizona iced tea. It's a once an art movement and an audio experience. Political and yet simultaneously political. A cynical parody of the broken promises of rampant consumerism. Unless we're overthinking it. Maybe that's half the fun. Vaporwave is dead. Long live Vaporwave. In the postmodern sounds of sea punk and Morsoff, of future punk and echo jams, vapor trap and late night lo fi, this is the story of our movement. Told by the people who matter, the artists, the labels, and most importantly, the fans. This is the story of Vaporwave. Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and if this video is a surprise to you, it's a surprise to me too, because this project did not exist, eh, well not 24, about 26 hours ago. So yeah, the world moves very fast, probably faster than ever, so art and critique and thoughts and action should uh, catch up. So yeah, uh, this, you know, obviously we're going through a worldwide phenomenon, event, whatever you want to call it, and uh, every day, what everyone knew yesterday is basically just swept away like on a dry erase board. Maybe a little bit of rem remnants where you didn't quite get all the lettering. But uh, I have a new project. It has already started production. It already has a cover. It already has a first uh, page. And it has an Indiegogo campaign. And we are uh, heading off. So this is pandemic. This is uh, about the world we're living in. Uh, and figuring it out while it is changing. Um, so this is going to be a very unique project. I'm even calling it an experiment uh, because as far as I know, something has not been done like this before. This is a, you can probably call it uh, science fiction or social fiction, reacting to an event as it is happening, as it is evolving or devolving. And so uh, it's already started. So this is a story about a uh, out of work bartender, service economy, a uh, young woman who uh, lost all of her income suddenly, out of nowhere, and she's trying to get to a little, uh, a little bit of scratch together. So you know how the gig economy works. She's worked a whole bunch of places. She, she sees these empty you know, uh, uh, streets of New York City, Manhattan and Brooklyn, and she goes, I remember that one company I worked at last year. It was the weirdest thing. I never could really understand what they did and it was the only place I've ever been where there was no security cameras at all. So she says, that's probably a good place to hit up. So she has a very simple thought. She can probably go there. She knows they know the uh, patterns of the security guard who used to always hit on her. She knows he's lazy. She knows he takes hour long smoke breaks. So she heads off 
and uh, she sneaks in and it is just the easiest caper ever. She's grabbing petty cash, she's grabbing expensive laptops, and then she gets her eye on a very, very nice uh, big screen monitor in the uh, boardroom. So she goes in and then in a building that's supposed to be empty, or in a you know, office, in a building, in a whole section of town, Wall Street, that's supposed to be absolutely empty today, the entire board of directors of this mysterious corporation where she never really understood what they even did, they come in. And then while hiding, she hears everything. Everything about everything that's going on right now. And then she is discovered and escapes. And now she has to deal with a couple of things. Number one, she's in an event that she barely understands, where she just got more information than anyone on earth except for those people in the room. And now she's got a way to figure out what to do with that information while not being killed and perhaps even more uh, uh, seriously not being discredited. So it's uh, already started. Uh, we got the, uh, the cover art, which is being uh, colored right now. It should be, uh, the colored version should be up tonight. Uh, it's called Pandemic. Um, and uh, I'm really, really interested in where this will go. And hey, we're all stuck inside. So this, is, this will be weirdly a book created as it is um, during the campaign evolving over something that is supposed to evolve over weeks or run out the clock or change into something completely different. So um, uh, the tone was the most important thing because this is an emerging event. It can't be silly or, tr or trite or exploitive, exploitative. So I found, I believe I found a way in which you can discuss things. And that's what I like to do is discuss things. I feel like over the last few years, discussion, debate, discourse has been taken off the table. You're not allowed to ask questions. And I'm going to ask some questions. Um, and, it, and then, you know, it'll be an interesting thing to hear people, hear experts, hear medical experts, people in politics, military, law enforcement, big business, science, whoever wants to share some cool information with me uh, that might help you know hone where the story is going. I pretty much uh, know where it's going. I'm writing it Larry Hama style, which is basically you start on page one and you end on the end page and you learn the story as it's growing, as it's evolving, as, as you're making it. Um, uh, actually in a kind of like nervous way, a lot of people, oh, were you nervous when Expendables launched? Not really. Were you nervous when, you know, job breakers? Not really. I mean, this is, yeah, this is, uh, I'm trying to think, what's the analogy? Uh, it's not jumping without a parachute, but I got a bunch of nylon, some silk, some thread, a harness, and the idea is, you know, to, to sew it on the way down. Um, so uh, go check it out. And uh, this is kind of, this happened before with uh, Jawbreaker's God King, where Zashi went from a very minor character to becoming more, to becoming the next book. So the ideas that he expressed to me um, and the concepts and the, the way that gets my wheels turning, uh, in my head, um, that will change it, and um, hey, it's something to do if you're just stuck inside for the next few weeks, trying to figure out your next move while the rest of the world does the same thing. So uh, go check it out. Like I said, it's a very, very simple, stripped down um, uh, Indiegogo page, one perk, um, and uh, let me know what you think. This is one of those, I mean, I always love hearing what people uh, say, but this is probably more than ever. I want to hear everyone's take on this, their thoughts on it. In addition to that, due to the sensitive, sensitive nature of this, this will not be, you know, the old classic, at least the crowdfunding of the last, you know, few uh, uh, years. This um, campaign might stop at any time, you know, just stop as in, you know, we're done, we're not taking any more orders. Um, and there's not going to be live streams or bookmarks or anything, you know, talking about something serious, real world um, that's happening. So uh, go check it out. Uh, pandemic on Indiegogo and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hi, my name is Doug Tenapel. I'm the creator of Earthworm Jim. Last year on Indiegogo, this book, Earthworm Jim, launched the cow, raised over $800,000, shattering Indiegogo records. And now we're releasing Bigfoot Bill 2, The Finger of Poseidon. It is the sequel to Bigfoot Bill 1, now available on Indiegogo. But enough of this sales stuff. Let's take a look at the art.